thanks to a Leatherman tool and an old fishing lure. Honey, are you gonna get mad at me because I'm working in my nice clothes? So, where are you taking me to dinner? Dinner? I was thinking liquid dinner. Ooh. <laughs> I'm a food truck. What's up, people? Today we're in Warren, Ohio of Trumbull County at the National Packard Museum. And this place is an incredible community asset that highlights the Packard Motor Car Company's history from the late 1800s until the present day. And like the thoughts of so many car guys out there, and most especially including myself, we think no automobile is worth a darn unless you can drive it. And right now there is a gorgeous 1936 Model 120B in a beautiful cream color sitting outside with the top down on a sunny day. I think we should go drive it and check out Warren, Ohio. Well, the Packard Museum here really is exceptional and has exquisite cars on display and oftentimes rotating exhibits such as these flat track motorcycles. But more importantly today, I'm excited to help this place come alive and show the awesome history and car culture that is the Packard Motor Car Company and its impact on the United States. Let's go. All right, guys, this is absolutely the prettiest day you could ask for with this. So come on and check out the car. I truly think this is one of the highlights of Packard design of their entire history. The mid-1930s, of course, this model being 1936 is truly special. It still has a lot of the charm and the beautiful opulence and somewhat decorative style of the early 1930s, but they're really starting to make the car more sophisticated. The other thing is the straight eight engine in this made 120 horsepower and the car is also 120 inch wheelbase, hence the name or the model 120. If you come on and look at the front, of course you can see the gorgeous and iconic Packard grille. Whenever you see a pre-war car that has this grille shape, you know it's a Packard. And if you look carefully, you see the trip lights and we'll get down here, let's get mechanical. This thing has independent front suspension. Can you see here with the coil springs and the independent front suspension? That is a big and technological design improvement for these cars of that time period. And let's go over here where we can see it the best. But the engine, Packard's engine, is a flathead straight eight, which was typical for that time period of other wonderful cars. But Packard really was an incredible luxury car for the United States at this time period. In 1936, they made something like 83,000 vehicles. That's an incredible amount. And that was something over like over 30,000 more vehicles Packard made than the year before in 1935. Also in 1936, this car, or one just like it, shall I say, was used as the pace vehicle for the Indy 500. Come on over here and have a look at this. This exact example and model is also very well optioned. If you have a look in the interior, you can see many wonderful options here. You have your cigar and cigarette lighter, of course, nice little ashtray. You've got an electric clock. There's even a radio. And I know we all take that for granted today, but that was something really special back then. You can see the centrally mounted speaker here and also the heater core here where you can open it up and have a very nice heater. This car is beautifully restored. You can see a later turn electric turn signals there. And of course, very nice display of instrumentation. You have this swirled glass shift knob that's very, very iconic of that time period. Very beautiful. This car also features a rumble seat. And today we've removed it, but the rumble seat itself has a windshield that can fold up. So something from the time period that was just so much fun. Of course, it got lost on cars afterward for many reasons from design to potential safety improvements. But the rumble seat is a wonderful, iconic piece of American motor history from that time period. This car is also optioned with the wheel pants that uh, fare it over and make it look even more beautiful. But I think it's time we took this car for a drive. So this is the 1936 Packard Model 120B. And of course the 120 stands for the wheelbase and inches as well as the horsepower. 120 horsepower out of this straight eight Packard engine. What's very exciting about this is so 1936, the, the automotive industry is really starting to get things right. And as for as old and charming as this car looks, things are getting solid, they're getting smart. As you know, this car has independent front suspension, which makes a huge difference to the ride quality and the handling of it. But with that 120 horsepower, this vehicle was able to do 100 miles an hour, 
flat out going straight. And I, I think that's just terribly exciting. Of it is terribly exciting. That is hauling the mail in a car from this time period. But it also has hydraulic drum brakes, which work beautifully. They're easy to modulate. And so really, as I'm driving around here right now, it's not that difficult to drive. But the nature of the way the gearbox shifts, it's non-synchro mesh. There's three forward gears with reverse. Right now I'm cruising in second gear. And as I said, flat out, this thing can do about 100 miles an hour. So you really don't do a lot of shifting with this. And when you upshift, you can single clutch it, push the clutch in, just deliberately to neutral and right into your next uh, gear going up the scale. The downshifts, it's nice to double clutch. So you let the clutch out in neutral and lift the throttle, match it and snick it right in and you can shift it real smooth. So requires a little bit of a knack there, but this car in general is just so well refined from the gearbox, the steering, the suspension, the hydraulic brakes that I can tell you this is an absolute joy to drive. Of course, it's got a big steering ratio, so I gotta do a lot of turning, not like a modern car, but I'm comfortable. The, the wind is staying off. I can wear a hat and look fashionable for the time period, and it's just doing beautifully. Except I'm losing power right now, a little bit. Feels like the throttle linkage just went out, so I'm gonna check that out real quick. It's an older car, it's beautiful restoration, but sometimes you gotta look them over. Okay, so no big deal, the throttle linkage, uh, there was a little cotter pin, apparently that came out and it popped off the carburetor, so I had no throttle. And the throttle butterfly just came open a little bit for a little bit of fast idle, but popped it back on, that'll work perfectly, thank you. So the, the natural way to fix a, a beautifully restored Concorde winning Packard is with a spinner bait and uh, a Leatherman tool, right? Thank you. Okay, honey, are you gonna get mad at me because I'm working in my nice clothes? What? Do you want to come out and say a snarky lady thing? <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. I'll fix this right up. All right. <laughs> All right. We're ready to go. All right, thanks to a Leatherman tool and an old fishing lure, we made a new pin for the throttle linkage. So let's see how this goes. I think it's gonna go well. Yes, I am not just a pretty face. Anyway, guys, we're in first gear. It's got this big, long shift lever of the three gears and this beautiful swirled glass knob. So I'm gonna show you, just illustrate up shifting. So I'm gonna shift up in a neutral, just a little pause, right up in a second, real easy. This car shifts beautifully, it drives beautifully, it runs perfectly. And I gotta be honest, I love Auburn, I've had a couple, but this thing runs circles around it. This is, this is a beautiful and exquisite car. And um, it just, you think it would be big and burly and hard to drive, but it's not, it's pleasant. The engineers back then, the craftsmen, the designers, not only did they know exquisite beauty, but my gosh, everything is just built fantastically. And while it doesn't perform like a normal car, you could in fact drive this car across country. I could go to California right now in style and comfort and have a great time. And so if you look right here, it's basically called Millionaire's Road. Some of these gorgeous um, Victorian, late Victorian looking houses were of the early industrialists here in Warren. And in uh, Humboldt County, was the chair or the centerpiece for the Western Reserve. So in the United States, when they're selling uh, deeds to land, this town really was a hub and a centerpiece. Uh, so for the early industrialized age, Warren was a big deal. The uh, Packard Electric Company was formed in 1890. And then it was in 1898 that one of the Packard guys bought a Winton car from up in Cleveland. Within a year, he decided he could do it better. And uh, in 1899, they designed and built their first Packard car with an investor by the last name of Weiss and help from, guess what, a Winton engineer. And uh, the next year, in 1900, they took the car to the New York Auto Show and a young salesman sold five cars <laughs> right away. Three of which, believe it or not, were to William Rockefeller. 
And that was huge because Packard cars from the get-go were all about luxury and engineering and making the best product. They even call Packard the American Rolls-Royce, which I think is fitting, but to be perfectly honest, I like Packard better than Rolls from this time period. So as it went on, in 1901, two, and then three, they started developing a race car called the Gray Wolf. And in 1903, it was setting speed records to the tune of 75, 80 miles an hour. Keep in mind, this is 1903, okay? Cities don't even have electricity, and these guys are hauling the mail doing 80 miles an hour. That is flying along. But also in 1903, the Packard Motor Company was getting serious, and they moved their manufacturing operation up to Detroit. So the more humble beginnings, even though they were high-end and great, started here in Warren, Ohio for those first few years, which started a major manufacturing thing for the first half of the 20th century that created the legacy that is the Packard automobile. And that brings us to what we've got here. This car is from 1936. It's absolutely exquisitely gorgeous, and I think represents all the pride of the early American, you know, industrialized era, bringing the automobile and what Packard is. And for you history guys and you, you tech nerds, World War II, Packard w would build Rolls-Royce Merlin engines under license for World War II. So those famous war planes like the P-40 Kitty Hawk, the P-51 Mustang, and the Supermarine Spitfire, all the really nasty ones, were powered by Packard-built Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. So it's just so exciting. And you know, when I'm driving this, dressed like this, here in war where it all started, it's, it's so exciting. It's exciting. I mean, it's First of all, this is a cool car just to drive around in, to drive. Not necessarily just to go to a show and sit around, but to drive and to do it here in the town where it all started. Look at beautiful architecture, the court square, the town hall, the mansions of the time period. And this is how you live the culture and really enjoy it. And today I am getting the opportunity to really enjoy it. So what I wanna do is, like any red-blooded American, go pick up a pretty girl and have a little fun. I think this is gonna be a great night for a date. All right, let's use that 120 horsepower. I got a hot dish. This is about to get fun. Dinner. Dinner? I was thinking a liquid dinner. Ooh. <laughs> I'm a food truck. It's too early for me. So what do you think of this car? This is so cute. I love it. Why I love do you the like color. It? It's such a pretty color. It is gorgeous. It's a nice cream color. Looks gorgeous in the sun. Reminds me of the beach. So this car was iconic for 1936. That's when old Hollywood really started getting glamorous. Yeah. Yeah, can you think of some movies or stars from that time period? Well, let's see. I mean, Clark Gable is pretty huge. Yeah, he's a big deal. Judy Garland and Wizard of Oz. Yeah, that was 39. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. What else? We have Errol Flynn, Robin Hood, yeah. Olivia de Havilland. It was gorgeous. I, I think about that a lot that kind of style that culture with this car don't you think of course Let's it's see. hard to not think about that when you're riding in a car like this i know you feel the chic the beauty of the time period in that of course the united states uh had was in a depression mm -hmm. in that decade mm -hmm. and uh franklin delano roosevelt was our president leading into world war ii he so was president for a long time too yeah he was he made it into his third term of that Mm -hmm. But uh, what do you think of the way it sits in this ride? It's really comfortable. This is the first time you've been in a car like this. Yes, it is. You're being a good sport. Your hair is getting messed up right now with the <laughs> top down. Yeah, but what's with a little mussing of the hair? 
You gotta live a little bit. Yeah, of course. It feels really comfortable. I yeah. can't really complain. The I seats are really true. soft and the ride feels really nice. It's a little bouncy, but not bad. <laughs> well, it was 1936. Well, yes. <laughs> exactly. This car is gorgeously restored. I think he's This guy worried. is uh, <laughs> so in awe of the car's design, he's forgetting to drive. What's up? <laughs> Thank you. Love the outfits too. Yeah. What outfits? We normally dress this way. <laughs> this car's a lot quieter than I thought it would be. It's super quiet. I didn't think Can, you can't listen. It's it's actually running right now. Doesn't sound like you it. Almost can't hear it at all. It does not sound like it's running. Like it's there's no there's no vibe nothing no vibration. It's, it's perfect idle. Actually, I didn't even know it was running when you first I took know. off. I'm I like, is it, is it on? Is it working? Is it on? Is it is it is it okay? Yeah, it's running perfectly. <laughs> <Is> it okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A lot of attention in this car. Wow, sure. In More than anything like this. new. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the. Uh, Town that started Packer. This yeah. is the Packer Town. This is the Packer Town. And I'm sure they don't get to see it very often. Manhattan and a Cosmo, you know our style, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers to Packard and Warren, Ohio. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the day here at Warren, Ohio and being at the National Packard Museum. That 1936 Packard Model 120B sure is an incredible machine. You had a good time, yeah? Yes, I did. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, we hope you guys enjoyed riding along with us and making that history and car culture absolutely come alive. It was a beautiful day. This is a wonderful community. And uh, I really can't say enough good about that museum. I think it's got great leadership and they've really found a way to make that matter for the future. So, of course, till next time, we hope you subscribe. Please go to the National Packard Museum's website. There you can donate. Keep that car culture alive for the future and mattering to the community. Also, in the link here in a YouTube video, you can go down there and find the link to donate as well. So, it may seem like a little thing, but if you've enjoyed today, really, please go there, donate something, whether it's small or large, our American history really matters. And uh, it still comes alive. So we hope you enjoyed the day. See you guys next time. There are many tools, tricks, and products that help me do all these automotive adventures. And one of them is Ceramic Coating by Avalon King. This stuff literally bonds to the molecular level of your paint to keep that long-lasting shine for years. And better than any old conventional wax literally can. Nobody actually has time for wax on, wax off anymore. So give Avalon King a try. You can go down in the description, buy some, you're going to be glad you did.